Yeah. Presenter view, so we, we, we get to see what's coming. Okay? Yeah. But the downside is, oh, just a reminder that we've got all our resources yeah. uh, for our our death, our sister binder. It's our big blue binder. Andrew has just pulled that up. That's over here. And so, if you get a chance to take a look at that, you can see the resources that are available. We also had a few of you uh, email us asking for uh, some electronic copies of like the funeral planning and maybe some other um, funeral planning guide for our saviors. If you send that back to us, then we will keep it on file here for you. So we're going to start up a good file like that that could have your health care directive and your funeral planning. Rico? There was a question about people had their paperwork. And they had it ready, but they missed the notary public. Um, you can also do witnesses on those if you've seen that. You just need two witnesses that are not family members or are not the people that are named in the actual document. So we ready to go with the bookmarks? So let's take our, our bookmarks together, everyone. How does everybody have access to one? And we will again read together and sing together. So together we read. I, Mary, is going to be next. And so together pray oh god support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed the fever of life is over and our work is done then in your mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holiness and peace for everlasting and a reminder that these wooden crosses are also for you, so you may take one of those uh, as a remembrance of this time that we've had together and for praying uh, on your own. And now we're going to hand it over. We're going to switch it up and we're going to stay over here. So if you want to just get it easier to shift your sitting. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I see one of my friends, Lucy, here. That's nice. And others, it's great. We're, we're just really delighted to be invited. Um, thank you for being us, for being here today with us. So Zach and I come to you as a part of a growing movement, a movement that's transforming after death care practices, really. Um, and we're having these conversations around what does the earth need and what do we need? And amazingly, these two things are quite in sync. We are active leaders with the Land Conservation Natural Burial Project here in the Twin Cities. We'll tell you about that. And we want you to know before we even tell you about us that we are biased. Today, we come to you as biased presenters. We are here really to focus about how do we care for this earth community? You'll hear that in our conversation. You probably heard of things like human composting and mushroom suits, maybe you know some of these things, memorial forests for where to put your cremated remains, things like that. Well, we're not gonna focus on those today. We are gonna focus on natural burial. 
but we're totally open to if you have questions about those and you want to hear more about those to talking about that answering your questions afterwards all right let's see so my name i'm ann ann archbold is my name i'm a bunch of stuff but the things that maybe for today you might want to know i am a social worker i am a funeral celebrant i'm a caregiver I am a worm composter and a gardener and a lover of prairies. Who are you, Zach? Good morning. It's good to be with you. My name is Zach Willett. I am a hospital chaplain and a funeral and wedding celebrant, a former teacher, in kindergarten all the way through grad school. They're more similar than you think. <laughs> Turner, a former teacher turns picture book writer, and I am a lover of the winter. So at the sidebar, I was duly impressed with the morning service outside. Hardy, hardy soul. I love it. So we're going to begin, as we always do, with a land acknowledgement. So I'll just ask you to quiet yourself, connect to this land the people who stewarded it for generations and care for it today with this land acknowledgement. We recognize all land as sacred. We acknowledge that the Twin Cities is built on Minnesota Makoche, the ancestral and contemporary lands of the Wapakute Dakota people, forgive me. We honor Dakota lifeways and their deep connections to the land water. We are committed to educate ourselves and our community about this land and our relationships with it and with each other. Thank you. So just to dive right in, there are really only two pathways ultimately for what's called final disposition, which is an interesting phrase, where our bodies rest ultimately. And they are burial and cremation. But we have choices within each of those pathways. And Anne's told you we are unabashedly biased towards one of those choices within the pathways. So within burial, there is the choice of conventional burial. This is what most people think of when you think of yeah. burial. But there's also natural or sometimes called green burial. And it looks a little bit like this, but there's wonderful variations within. Within cremation, there is flame-based cremation. And there's also something called water-based cremation. And we'll get a little bit more into those details. But these are really the only two paths. But there is a special consideration worth mentioning for whole body donation. Some people will say, I want students to be able to learn science to be able to benefit from, from my living and my dying when I'm done. But what's interesting is even if you donate your whole body, you still end up either being buried or cremated, hence the two final pathways. Because this is our one chance to talk about whole body donation, which we, we love questions about um, when it comes to the Q&A. Um, as Anne said, we love questions about all the things. We could literally give like 15 presentations about all the different things we love talking about. But a quick thing about whole body donation, it is not the same as organ donation. Organ donation is an individual part of your body. Whole body, as it sounds, is the entire body going to a medical institution for research, for scientific study, most often for future doctors to learn, not from a textbook, but from an actual human body. And so when you do give your body through whole body donation, your body becomes what they call a donor teacher. I love that hyphenated phrase, a donor teacher. And it serves the common good. There's typically no cost for this to the family, but there are a number of factors, this is important to stress, that could make it not possible, despite someone's fervent wishes. It could be literally that they just have too many bodies that have already been donated at the time that you die. So it's super important to have a backup plan. Um, or if you're really committed to whole body donation. There's also, as you can imagine, lots of forms. Um, and ultimately, the, that two things, you've heard of the University of Minnesota, you've heard of the Mayo, Mayo Clinic, both of them have great programs that walk you through from beginning to end how to prepare for this. So just know there's out there. And importantly, um, the Mayo Clinic 
when they are done with their donor teachers, um, those bodies are cremated through water cremation, water-based cremation. So if, once you mention the Mayo Clinic is on board with something, usually I was like, oh, okay, all right, that sounds perfect. <laughs> all right, so uh, because those are the two pathways, um, as Anne said, we're unabashedly biased towards natural burial. But this video from our friends in Canada, the Natural Burial Association, it does a great job of introducing why natural burial is such something that some people, some people get so excited about. And it also makes some important clarifying um, contrasts and distinctions. You're going to hear multiple references toward the end toward, to Ontario, because the people who made the video are in Ontario. We are not in Ontario. But we can be just as enthusiastic about natural burial as our, uh, our siblings up there. You're also going to hear a reference to centigrade and just file it in your head. 800 degrees Celsius is uh, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. You're like, oh, how's that going to be? It? We'll figure it out. And hopefully the sound is nice and clear. Let me make sure I've got this going. Nope. Sorry. It will play. I, I am confident of that. It just might need me to. Take good care of it this way. If we told you your death would protect the earth and nurture new life, would you believe it? With natural burial, it can. Natural burial is one of the most eco friendly ways of caring for our dead. Without the use of chemical embalming, we are laid to rest in a biodegradable casket or wrapped in a shroud, and our body contributes to the Earth's renewal. Natural burial grounds aren't at all like modern cemeteries. Rather than a manicured lawn with rows of tombstones, imagine a quiet forest or a wild meadow. Graves are marked by simple stones, native plants, or a communal dedication. However commemorated, the location of every grave is recorded. The people who run natural burial grounds ensure the land is restored and protected in its natural ecosystem. You might think, isn't cremation eco-friendly? Not at all. The body is incinerated at about 800 degrees Celsius for two hours and carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere. You might worry that scavengers will dig us up. We are buried too deep for scavengers. We feed the soil, not the wildlife nor do we harm the water. Just like modern cemeteries, natural burial grounds are regulated. We're often asked if natural burial is legal. Absolutely. Before funerals became commercialized, natural burial was the way many of our ancestors cared for their dead. And to this day, several faiths uphold the tradition. At natural burial grounds, we're invited to participate in the ceremony by laying the body to rest, filling in the grave, and decorating it. One guest wrote, everyone who attended has stated the desire to be buried here. The whole experience was perfect in every way. With nature as our teacher, being in its midst helps us see death as part of life. There is solace in knowing our loved one's last act is giving back to the earth. Today, there are hundreds of natural burial grounds worldwide started by people with compassion for the planet and the families they serve. In Tennessee, Larkspur Conservation spans 112 acres of diverse forest and meadow. Every burial is an act of healing. In one of England's national parks is South Downs Natural Burial Site, where each grave is dug by hand to minimize environmental impact and to respect the area's tranquility. In BC, Catherine Valentine and Gavin Johnston created Salt Spring Island Natural Cemetery. As current stewards of the land, their mission is to restore the forest to one of giant Douglas firs. Salt Spring is Canada's only public natural burial ground that stands alone in nature, not attached to a modern cemetery. In Ontario, some cemeteries have sectioned off the natural burial area but we believe our province is capable of bigger, wilder possibilities. 
expansive sites that protect Ontario's beauty and offer people a final resting place in nature. The Natural Burial Association, a nonprofit organization independent of the funeral industry, aims to bring this option to Ontarians so we can choose to leave a legacy of nature. Please lend your voice, share this video, and follow us on social media. So that's what we're really excited about, but we want to Kind of also share some reasons why we're not as excited some of the more conventional or, or um, popular item uh, options that we have right now before us. So conventional burial. So very resource intensive in terms of the impact on the environment, right? We know up here the embalming machine. Um, embalming became popular after the Civil War. Soldiers from the north were needed to be transported north. Lincoln was embalmed and had his famous parade back. So that is an option. The earth doesn't mind the embalming fluids actually that much. Um, the earth can handle that. Um, we, our human bodies, don't. The um, funeral directors who are embalmers, um, that they have a higher rate of certain um, cancers because of dealing with these toxic chemicals. So that's where we come from on that one very resource intense. This photo down bottom left here, that's what it looks like underneath the conventional cemetery. There's a thin layer of grass, the manicured grass, and those are all, it's like a parking lot for cement vaults. That's what it looks like. We don't often get to see that picture because it's not appealing, right, to us. But the um, there are no laws that require use of a burial, an outer burial container. Those are cemetery policies and those are to aid in maintenance costs so that the large machinery can run over and there's not sinkage. But cemeteries who do natural burial find ways they, um, depending on the kind of natural burial, I should say, they can, you can just go around for it uh, with the minimal sinkage that happens after a natural burial and fill it, fill it in. And then of course we have the use of resources for precious woods for the big caskets, metals, um, fertilizers for the lawn and the fuels to run the grass, you know, grass cutting machinery and things like that. Flame-based cremation, obviously the use of fossil fuels to keep an incinerator that hot for that long. And oftentimes, depending on how busy the crematorium is, one way to, if, if flame-based cremation is the most, is the best option for you, for whatever, for many reasons, you know, that might be, that might be the case, um, find a busy crematorium, one that doesn't go up and down, have to heat um, the crematorium all the time. So it uses a lot of fossil fuel to heat the crematorium. And also the emissions that come out, the video talked about this, the carbon dioxide, but there are many other chemicals that go up. One of the most toxic, it's mercury that comes from some of us of a certain age have mercury in the fillings. And when it, they're burned, um, that goes up into the atmosphere to never come out again, right? And then that just keeps cycling around for us. Whereas if they're buried, they're inert. They don't get activated into the rock. A more earth-friendly option is water-based cremation. It uses less energy, about an eighth less fossil fuel in that way. Uh, the end product, is about the same for a flame-based cremation or a water-based cremation. There are more of those ashen with bone fragment remains in a water cremation because less goes up in the smoke. Okay. Um, the liquid byproduct, people often have a question about that. Um, is this toxic? Is it, is it okay? Um, there is a process that they, uh, that the liquid that goes into the sewage system is safe. There is no human DNA, you know, it's septic. It doesn't harm. And actually some of the small bits of phosphorus that are in it, actually the small creatures can, can deal with that in small quantities. It's not like when we put the fertilizers in. So. And both of these are already available. Like here in Minnesota, we have water cremation that is available to us. So there are various locations that you can you can find that. Can you explain the process of water? How does that work, right? Yeah, thanks, Jack. Um, the water is heated up about 300, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. 
it um, there is an alkali solution, 95% water, about 5% alkali. And there's slow movement that rocks the body on a on a on a on this rack that's in that in that um, the machine. And then all the soft tissue is dissolved and you're left with the bone. So just like in fire cremation, the crematorium operators use what they call a cremulator. They actually create those. They have to put those in. They Those bones after their cremation, the big bones like our skulls and our femurs, don't actually just turn into that cremated remains. People call it ashes, but if you've ever seen them or touched them, there are fragments of bone in those remains, right? So that, that's how that process goes. Yeah. So these are things we don't love. So I'm going to move us on to the next, the next one. But they are available. And we know that there are many values and money considerations and traditions that lead us to make our choices. So um, we just wanted to let you know there are some more earth-friendly options in that realm. Those cremated remains, a lot of times people will um, bury them. And that's the recommended um, practice is to bury those cremated remains after a few years that they're contained and then the earth can work their magic on it and they become, they, it neutralizes, it mitigates that. Um, however, many times families will scatter them. So recommended is to scatter them widely. Our cremated remains actually don't have anything that the earth is needing or wanting. They're actually toxic, they hurt. They harm the plants and the trees. So um, if we scatter them around more, then they do less damage, right? So they're too salty and they're too sweet. They just don't have anything that the earth has to work to make, make use of them. Um, actually not make use of them, but to neutralize them. So at this point, we make us just a soft mention of this greenwashing notion. Greenwashing is very... We see it everywhere because we're all concerned. Everybody, at some level, everyone's concerned about climate change and about what's happening. But um, greenwashing is misleading. It's lying. It's it's uh, giving us a tidbit of truthful information to try and make us believe that this is actually good for the environment. So there's this whole thing called memorial forests, and in those forests, the the remains are scattered around, often the base of a tree not good for the soil, not good for the living plants and trees that are there in that way, unless there's some mitigating some soil that can help, special soil amendment that can help take away the danger of that. There is one here in our Twin Cities area called Better Place Forests. You've maybe heard of them. They pop up everywhere. If you do Facebook, or if you're Google searching natural burial, they'll be the first ones to come up with paid ads. Um, <coughs> Be a good consumer in all of this. Be a good consumer and you all are going to have a jump because you're thinking about it now. So now you can do your research and see what fits for you, right? So we just give a little, um, be careful. Be careful about some things that seem green. Um, they're not always as they seem on the outside. Zach, I'm going to turn it to you and stop now. Let's talk about, we're going to talk about what we do like. Let's now. talk about what we do like. Yeah, I'm already going to share with you. Thank you. So natural burial, also called green burial, uh, as Anne said, greenwashing is a real problem. Um, and so there's, there's shades of green, right? But natural burial, um, as we understand it, outside of the greenwashing, natural burial is solid. And it's been used for millennia um, by different cultures and different faiths around the world. We have here a picture on top from Indianapolis of the Muslim tradition of natural burial. And, and the lower picture, is um, the tradition of Jewish natural burial. Their definitions of natural burial aren't necessarily the same as what we're talking about today, but it's in the same vein. We're not accusing them of greenwashing. Um, there's just lots of, there's lots of room in the spectrum. For example, um, a lot of Jewish tradition does use a burial vault, but like a butter dish, so that, so that the burial vault um, is like down and it's open to the earth below. That connection to the soil is very important. But again, a lot of places think it's important to be able to run their lawnmowers over those concrete walls. So, um, but there are also natural burials in the Jewish and Muslim tradition that are exactly um, what Anne and I are talking about today. It's important to note, as was in the video, 
that the Minnesota Department of Health does regulate all cemeteries, including natural burial cemeteries. And importantly, there are zero public health concerns about the burial of a dead body directly into the earth, either in a conventional cemetery or in a natural burial area. People often will say, what if I die of cancer? Or my loved one died of cancer and it has, the body has all those, um, the uh, chemotherapy drugs in it. The earth can break that down. The earth knows what to do. It's at that special layer um, down where there's all the microbes that know what to do. And we just have to give it time. So the grave, this is important, is about three and a half to four feet deep. That's the right depth so scavengers will never dig you up. Again, people have been doing this for millennia. They've never had grandma's femur show up in grandma's yard. That's never happened. Um, and but So it's deep enough so scavengers can't find us, but shallow enough that the great microbes are there to do their work of turning us into soil. Um, as you heard, it also does not, in the video, it also does not contaminate the groundwater at all. So, next thing to know about natural burial, almost everything that goes into the ground with a natural burial, because the first slide was like what it isn't, right? Um, you know, no, um, no cast, let me just go back and make sure I, I covered that. Um, no burial container made of metal or precious wood, no concrete or metal, vault, and no embalming. We just want it to be as, as quick and easy for that to become soil as possible. So then what is it? What it is, is everything going that goes in the ground is, uh, is biodegradable, it's non-toxic. We say almost everything, because maybe you have an artificial hip or an artificial joint. Those can go in with natural burial, no problem, um, because they're non-toxic, right? And give the earth enough time, everything will break down. Some natural burial areas um, do require a pacemaker to be taken out. And that's because some of them have mercury, like some tooth fillings, or have other things that we just don't want to put, even in small amounts, into the soil. But other places, because they're further from water, don't have that issue. So that's a, that's a policy that, that changes place to place. Um, what else do I want to highlight? I want to highlight um, that natural burial is about what happens to the human body, but also what happens to the earth. And that's a good way to think about the three distinctions of different kinds of natural burial. So the first type of natural burial is hybrid. And so this is existing conventional cemeteries that say, hey, we like this idea, or this idea is trendy, um, and we want to get in and um, um, participate. But we love it because it means people who have a conception in their mind of, oh, I want, it, I want, I want grandma and grandpa to be side by side. Grandpa died a long time ago and we gave him, we embalmed him and we gave him a conventional burial, but hey, can we put grandma next to him with a natural burial? Hybrid cemetery says, yes, yes, you can. And they exist, they exist here in the Twin Cities. The next big category is natural burial. So no vaults anywhere. And we have one of those currently in the Twin Cities, but it's not certified by the Green Burial Council. Um, and sorry, we have more than those because Gate of Heaven um, Preserve at Resurrection Catholic Cemetery in Mendota Heights is certified by the Green Burial Council. And that works good for people who have a connection to the Catholic tradition. People who don't, we need to find better options. And so, ba -ba -da -da, we're in this last category that we really love, which is conservation natural burial. It's, a, it's still natural burial, but plus plus. It's like made even more awesome. And this is when we're taking extra care for the land, not just for, uh, for, the, for the body. Anne's going to say more about that in a moment, but I want to go back to natural burial areas um, and say that a natural burial area, so the, the middle column and the right column, it'll look more wild, right? It'll look more nature, less manicured. And that's because they're committed to practices that cause no long-term degradation of soil health, plant diversity, water quality, or ecological habitat. They're also less dense. So burial plots aren't as near to each other. They give the, we have the earth space to, to turn us into soil. And they have programs for integrated pest maintenance, management, pardon me. So they always take care of things in a healthy, earth-friendly way. As Anne said, with everything that we're talking to you about, you may already have plans, plans can change. The key, the key phrase we encourage you is ask, educate, and advocate. So if you already have plans, ask how you can change them. Not if, how. Educate them on what you want. 
and then advocate if they if the initial response is, oh yeah, we're hearing about that, but mm, it's not possible. Advocate and say, well, let's make it possible. Nothing changes unless we change it. So, and let's let you get, oh, so imagine, imagine natural burial, natural conservation, natural burial in the Twin Cities. This is explicitly what we're working on. And we would love for you to join us. So conservation burial, the big part that makes it different than natural burial, both awesome, but conservation burial means that there is an outside organization, recognized conservation organization that either holds a land, a conservation easement on the property or there's a deed restriction. So that's like in perpetuity, right? When the Minnesota Land Trust holds an easement on a piece of property that for conservation, that means that land now will be saved for all these beautiful children that were reading books over here before we started, right? We're doing something for those generations and for the land and all the creatures. Um, some conservation principles include some of the things Zach said, you know, preservation of habitat for wildlife restoration of the land, attention to what's happening with the water in that area. Um, it, it's just, it's all connected and it really is healing and meaningful for the human community, but for all. And in many of these conservation burial areas, um, the land, the expense, the cost to bury someone in a conservation natural burial area actually can then further land conservation, then that money can go back in and feed back in to cycle out and conserve more. So it is changing the whole way we think about death. Not always about what the human wants, but what does the land want and the air and the water and the creatures. So it's really helping invite us to that care of creation shift in consciousness. All right, conservation burial grounds. They might look like a nature sanctuary, paths for walking. Um, Zach, can you put up the other ones on yes, there? Sorry. Yeah. So these are all pictures of conservation or natural burial areas. People often ask, well, how is the grave marked? And usually there's a natural stone or a flattened stone made of like granite from that local area or um, with a pile of stones. We can see by looking here and that GPS markers are often used um, to be able to track or like little metal medallions with the person's name and, and date, date of birth and date of death. Um, once burial is complete, oftentimes native grasses and plants will just grow right over. You can see that kind of happening in the site from Georgia. Um, and when we look at um, these, these, we can tell that humans have gathered. Humans are gathering to remember, to celebrate, to honor. The um, picture down in the bottom is from the Larkspur um, burial area in Tennessee outside of Nashville. And these are friends who gather every year on this per the person who's buried there, their friend or relative, and they gather to remember. And so one of the things that Zach and I, it draws our hearts in with natural burial also is the power of healing of the earth for all of us when we're grieving, when we've lost someone we love, the earth can hold that and helps us to heal and when we go. And we wanted to show you um, a, a little clip of that. So this is a little video that comes, well, it's a long video actually, it's a documentary that aired earlier this year on TPT. Um, our Twin Cities Public Television. If you um, are a Passport member, you can access it still. It's called Bury Me on Taylor's Hollow. And we just want to show you what, how this family um, honored and celebrated and grieved and said goodbye. And so this is just a very short clip of what their conservation burial um, looked like. This is Oops, sorry. We lost our video. Oh, did the sound go off? The video was going back. Yep, uh, we weren't getting it out of the book. Ah. Now we are. I want to sit down 
in your heart. Happy in wonder. Keep me safe and strong. I want to hear your name and recognize you as my own. Bury me with the awful word I heard. you have no control in the end but then when that pivots and they're free to find a place like this where we know like this is what you would want we are returning you to where you started we are giving you beauty and nature and a spiritual experience with the, with the world with the planet that you love so much he's here and uh we're just grateful Happy and wonder, to be safe and strong. I want to hear your name and recognize you as my own. Carry me with the awful word I heard. So this is us, Land Conservation Natural Burial Area. We would love for you to join with us in whatever way you can to teach other people about this, to help us establish a Land Conservation Natural Burial Area that is in the Twin Cities metro area. We don't have any in Minnesota. There's like 13 certified conservation burial areas around the country at this point. It's something that I think many of us want here. And um, what we need, we need, if you're fired up about it and you want to join us, we have monthly meetings. You're welcome to come. We have a Facebook page. We have a website. You can find us, email us. Um, we need people who know about land acquisition 
or maybe know people who own land that might like to make turn conserve their land in this way as they transition forward. Um, we need people, we need to tell more people about it. If we don't, if people don't know that natural burial can happen, then they can't choose it and they can't educate and they can't advocate for it. So tell people about it. And if you know other groups that might want us to speak with them, we're happy to do that. All right. Um, so I'm going to stop there. And we have, if you would like, so we have prepared a resource guide for you all. It'll be in the magic blue binder. Um, there are a lot of links in it. So it'd be easier to get digitally. So if you would like that, Zach has two clipboards and we'll just maybe put one here. You can pass it around and start one back there. We, If you only want us to send you the resource guide, put a box in that one. If you want to get uh, updates now and again on what we're up to, um, go ahead and mark that one too. And we will respect that, um, that limit. All right. So let's turn to questions and answers after one final slide. Going home to the earth, natural burial, right? So basically what we are saying, if you take one thing away from what we, we've talked, we are all walking one another home. And um, one body at a time, actually. Yeah. So there you go. That's what we got to say today. And we're open to any questions. Yes. Before you do a time lapse, if there's anybody singing in the choir, I hate to throw people away. And if there's a time to get pulled away, no, of course. In fact, this is probably for plenty of people. All right. Anybody have any questions that they want to ask? If you want to ask for the whole group, otherwise, Zach and I are going to hang out. We're going to um, pray with you today, too. So we'll be around. Hmm. Any questions? Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you. 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 